What's going on, everybody? Today is Monday, April 15th, 2024. That's right. It's tax day. So make sure you got your tax returns in. The IRS does not mess around. They do not they mess around. Don't. They come in for that ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My name is John Duffy Hussein, and I'm joined, as always, by my fellow tribe mates, Mr. Kyle Petty and Miss mm -hmm. Gina Morgino. Uh, we are Strat Chat, your favorite reality TV podcast. So find us on the socials at Strat Chat Pod. We're out there everywhere. Throw us a like, a comment, a subscription, and a follow if you don't follow us already. Um, and if you'd be so kind, um, we'd really love it if you head over to places like Spotify or Apple Podcasts and leave a really nice review because, you know, we just really appreciate it. So, all right. <laughs> what are we here for tonight? We are here to discuss episode seven, episode several. Wow, of Survivor Forty Six. Several. I was really um, impressed by that. I have to say, I'm like that was that's very funny. It's very funny. Um, <laughs> well, it was the name of the episode. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't giving you the credit. I was giving. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. The <laughs> I was going to say. I don't want to take any misplaced credit, so I'll just make sure we're clear. No, but like, not... but it actually was called, you know, episode yeah. several. Mm -hmm. So I just thought you were calling back to that, and I was cheering it on. Um... <laughs> well, I was calling back to that, but yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, Oof, we'll here we start. are. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So. I guess um, let's get into this episode, right? What did you guys yeah. think overall? Uh, we Again, I know I said it last week. I feel like I've been saying it every week that we haven't been super high on the season. Um, but now we, we, you know, we're into merge. So what are the thoughts on the, uh, you know, on the season so far, this latest episode? A any improvement on the season, you think? Or are you still feeling a little down on it? I'm still a little down. Um, I don't like two tribals. Um, cause now we're right back to the same numbers we've been complaining about the entire time. I'm ready for a proper merge. Let's get together and get going. Yeah. The, the mergatory phase doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Bah, bah, There's nothing. Oh. <laughs> I literally, I literally said it to myself while watching the episode. I was like, "There's nothing like you know merging, only to unmerge a day later." <laughs> like, de what is right. Right. <laughs> like, to demerge. Yes. Um, Merge. But, merge. <laughs> um, all right. See, and this is, I feel like it just like, it shows you right off the bat because we finally had merged tribes and things started to get interesting before we separated again, right? Because I thought we had some genuinely interesting moments going into the, the immunity challenge. So um, the first oh thing best. was obviously uh, Mariah had been voted out at the last tribal council, but Venus got one vote. Um, so Venus goes back to camp immediately assumes that it's soda that put the vote on her and calls her out on it um, so we were getting some drama and we saw tevin actually kind of enjoying this it gave everybody else a chance to see how soda and venus are together um and you know other people were happy to see it because they're like wow look at this crack in nami like we can really exploit this and like use this to mm -hmm. our, our advantage um and then we did find out though I don't know what I, I'm so curious to get your thoughts on this is that Charlie decided he wanted to own up to the fact that he was the one that voted for Venus and told her uh, Q was not happy about this. So, like, what did you think of the whole soda Venus interaction coming back from tribal? And then um, and then I guess after that, we can talk about Charlie's decision to kind of tell Venus. Oh, that's what I was preparing to talk about. What was the first question? <laughs> well, so talk about Charlie then. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about Charlie <laughs> just because I I don't understand why he felt like he needed to tell Venus that. Like, why yeah, did that need to come out? Like, I, I I don't know who that was serving. Um, right. It makes no sense I, to me. Yeah, it's it like, didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, the the right, only it's thing I ever see that being beneficial is, and I, I think we saw this happen last season, where it's like, if there's already a jury and you want to make sure that you're sending them off, like somebody off a of jury manager being like, I was not the one hmm. to vote you out. Like, I'm still a number for you. Like, in that kind of a situation, that makes sense to me. But telling the person who is still there, I was the only person to vote to get you out, 
does not make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just didn't get it because it's like you said, God, who does this serve? Like, who does this benefit? It's like, unless people are like actively accusing you <laughs> of something, why right. are you going to own up to it? Like, all this could do is benefit your game because it's causing chaos that doesn't involve you. No one's even looking at you. No right. one's looking so, at you. And I also think that I, the only other reason that I might do something like this is if like, if I actually felt like I was friends with this person, but I was, I see a game reason to get them out, but then the, the votes didn't go as I expected. So I'm trying to save a little bit of face. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought the majority was going on you. I'm sorry. You know, we're friends or something, but they didn't have a pre-existing relationship or anything. Like there was, there was literally no reason for this whatsoever. Like, right. uh, unless if I'm like grasping at straws, I can maybe make a case of like, look, see how on the outs I am. I, I was the one who voted for the wrong person. Look, I'm on the bottom. Uh oh, I'm not a threat. I don't know what I'm doing. But like, he didn't quite play it that way. So I don't see that being his mindset. You no, know? no. And it almost it made me feel like he felt guilty about it and wanted to own up to it for that reason. Like, that's the way that it made me feel. It was yeah. like, oh, Charlie feels bad because Venus and Soda are fighting. Like, oh, uh. <laughs> that's the way. It... Right. I'm not I, mean, I, I guess have, but... so. Right. I, I don't know that he should have either. Like, yeah, I don't know why he thought that he would benefit from that. Um, the second half of this is Q. And it's like, you know, whether you agree with his decision to do this or not, I don't know why you think you have any kind of authority or jurisdiction over what Charlie is doing when he's brand new to you also. Yeah. Like, yeah. Q, I, I feel like Q's biggest problem is that he loves to be the one like telling people what to do. Yeah. yeah. And the second that, uh, you know, someone like kind of goes back at him at all, he loves to twist people's words. Um it's it's happened multiple times. I think it happened with Jess early on when Yanu was separated. Um, I forget exactly what the context was, but Jess had said something, and then Q immediately went to Tiffany and Kenzie and like tried to like spin her words in sort of a way. And he did the same thing in this episode with Ben, which I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but like Q and Ben were talking, and Ben was kind of because Ben knew when we got to when we got separated, Ben and Tim were outnumbered by Yanu and Hunter. And Ben went up to uh, Q and was like, listen, like, if we want to vote Hunter out, like, if you need to say my name, you know, like, you know, to kind of keep Hunter comfortable so he doesn't use a shot in the dark or anything, like, that's fine. Like, like I'm willing to take the risk, like, to show you that I want to work with you. Because um, Ben said, like, you have to take risks. And Q immediately went to Kenzie and Tiff and was like, we have to write Ben's na name down. Ben said mm -hmm. he doesn't ma he doesn't mind if he goes home. It's like, no, he doesn't want to go home. He's just saying he he's in a desperate spot. He needs people to play with. If you want to say his name, that's fine. Like, you have to take risks in this game. He's not saying, yeah, write my name down. I don't care if I go home. Right. Like, like, right. Because like, I feel like Kenzie and Ben got very close in this episode. And it was like, if I'm Kenzie feeling like, oh, like, if Ben doesn't mind, like, I guess maybe I will vote him out. Like, that's totally different than what Ben presented yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. Completely different. And it's so strange of me for him to even jump on something like that, even if he did think that that's what Ben was saying, when it wasn't that long ago that Q was saying, just vote me out. Yeah, yes. that's right. Like, yeah. that's cut right. it out, man. Like, you know, don't even twist things into things you did, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Like, like, stop. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so that was the whole Venus soda thing that led to Charlie and then Q. And obviously, like we saw, Charlie did not like the way that Q was. And I, I, I like, I guess I understand Q's point of view of being like, dude, why are you breaking up this chaos? Like, you're not even a part of it. Just let it go. Let, let it go. Like, I get that. But like the way he approached it was bad. And now Charlie walks away from that conversation. Charlie said in a confessional, he's like, it feels like Q is running things around here. And like, uh, he's got to go. And I'm like, that's the total opposite. It's like, as bad as Charlie's move was, like, you didn't have to own up to this. Q didn't have to pull Charlie aside and be all aggressive either. <laughs> so. mm -mm. No, he didn't. And that, that that's a major turnoff to me. And what's also ironic about this is that Charlie's takeaway was that Q is running things. And he isn't even. Like, <laughs> you're right. presenting right. every argument as if you are, but, like, you're not actually. And now you're taking the hits as if you are. Damn, like you're reaping no benefit from this behavior. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, truly. Um, 
any other, anything else on that before we move on? But I, I will just say, I think that that was probably, we've talked more about like a beginning of an episode here that I feel like we have all season before we get into like an immunity challenge. And I feel like it has to do with the fact that everybody was finally together. Oh, and there was had, a ton of yes. like gaming and crazy conversations right. in this episode, and, and finally. And right. right. And it, and it's everybody involved between Venus and Soda's fighting and Tevin looking on and then Charlie owning up to the vote and Q pulling Charlie aside. It's like all of a sudden things are happening. Yeah, the game is alive. Again. It's so yeah. very exciting. So of course, we're going to put everybody <laughs> back into sexes. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get right to it. So Jeff brought out all 12 of our, uh, remaining players. Um, and we were split into, I did enjoy the colors, at least a purple group and, and an orange group. <laughs> um, yes. And for this, immu <laughs> for this immunity challenge, each player had to stand on like a triangular, um, platform that was floating in the water. Uh, there were sort of different levels, like very thin spots for your feet on either side of the triangle that you had to then, uh, go from the bottom level, which everyone finished, move up to the second level. And then the top level, which was actually a little easier than I thought. It, I mean, the balance, I think up there, but it would, with how flat it was, I mean, obviously people started falling, so it wasn't easy, but like, I feel like an Australian survivor, that little piece gets smaller and smaller. And mm -hmm. I feel like they got to the top and it was like a big plank of wood. Well, so. even so I, I had seen somebody because I just watched the episode today, but I had seen somebody a couple of days ago tweet about this. So I was paying attention to it. It was so easy that they just skipped the first level in the edit. Like, did you notice that they started mm. on the second round, then they went up to the top one and then they did one leg. They completely skipped the whole first section of this challenge. I, I did happened. notice that because I was like, at first I was like, wait a minute. What are we saying is harder? Are we going up or down? I was like, <laughs> where did we start from? Like, I was very, very confused. From the water was, like, was so calm and nobody fell off. They were like, let's just not. I, I know it's an hour and a half now. Just got it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was so calm that they were joking around on them. Yeah. And not even on their own team. You know, like right. Q started that whole, like, what, that little alphabet, the alphabet kind of <laughs> thing. That, like, he Which was, was really, very really funny. Good <laughs> I didn't understand what the problem was. The B was not accepted because it was not. No, because you like, someone you said A. Yeah. Then you, yeah. if you're B, you say A and B. Then if you're C, you say A, B, and C. Oh. And whatever the letter was just kept saying their letter. So it never, like, built onto itself. Right. Gotcha. So by because the time then you're Charlie repeated the Baltimore, and I thought that well, he, he was, was being a silly was goose. Yeah, I think Baltimore he was, was. I was like, right. I don't know what the problem is. No, I'm like, Char just, Charlie was yeah. being a silly goose. <laughs> that smile Charlie gave the camera told me that he was just being like he was purposely being a dick. <laughs> oh no, I knew he was purposely being a dick, but I thought it was for a different reason because I didn't even understand what the game was. I thought the issue was that Baltimore kept being said. So no, like, no, no, no. It was that nobody was saying A before a. B. Yeah. Right, right. That's that's the whole point because once you get to like somebody's at like J and you're like, all right, I have to remember everything from, oh, I from A it was all the way to here. Fashion geography fun. No. <laughs> no. So. so it was funny though. Um so yeah, uh we had these two groups. Oh, wow. Um <laughs> for the orange group. Miss Kenzie actually won her first individual immunity. Congratulations, Miss um, yeah. Betty. Um, <laughs> and I will say that she, it felt like everyone was falling. She was just the last to fall. Like other people were falling as she started falling, but she was just the last one to hit the water. The whole orange team went out at this point, mm -hmm. but Kenzie at least was safe. So she was, you know, was good there. Um, and so the second group, uh, the purple group, I think, it, who was it down to? Uh, Tevin and uh, Maria. Maria? Right. Um, Tevin had a crazy recovery. I wanted him to win for that alone. That was wild. <laughs> I don't know how he he stayed on that freaking platform. I wanted him to win literally just for that reason. Like, don't let this be yeah. for nothing. It was so good. Right. Uh, he did fall off after that, though. So that meant that Maria took the win. So props to the women. Kenzie mm -hmm. and Maria taking this, uh, beating everybody else. So good Sisters job. Sisters are doing it for themselves. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. See? Oh, my God. Um, I don't and... like this challenge, by the way. 
Um, yeah. It makes me very uncomfortable when people fall because I feel like it's very unsafe. Like it's very easy to like crack your head on the wood. I like, noticed that when I think it was when Soda fell. She looked like she fell inches away from the one behind her. And I was like, this could have been yeah. a disaster. Yeah. It looks like when people know they're going down, they almost like push off it a little bit. Yeah. And it's like, I don't like this because if the, if a wave came in and you didn't know you were about to go down, you couldn't kind of predict it from your wobbly wobbliness. Like you can really hurt yourself. Yeah. Like hit your shoulder on a corner. I don't know. It just, this makes my anxiety like peak. What do you think about this too? Like what if like, you're near somebody that you don't want to win? And like you know, you're going down, so you jump off and like you make a big enough splash that it knocks them like off balance. Like that's kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know if I like that. Maybe I'll fall <laughs> off and just make sure I nick the end of your platform. <laughs> Kyle's like, like that that involved. Exactly. <laughs> if I fall off, I'm so, I'm definitely taking out people at least in a one ring radius. <laughs> if I go down, we're all going down. <laughs> um. But yes, uh, so Kenzie and Maria are both, uh, they both get immunity. Uh, the purple team, though, received also a reward thanks to Maria's win. They got a nice little brunch with some pastries and things like that and sandwiches. Um, there was another little catch to this um, competition, though, this uh, this immunity challenge, in that the uh, the team that lost would have to go to tribal council first, which meant that whoever left from their tribal council would not be making the jury. Sorry, Mikey. Um, <laughs> the team that would attend tribal council second, <laughs> whoever left there would be the first jury member. So, um, yeah. What did we have next? Um, okay. There was one thing. So there's obviously we're start starting to come together, but there still feels like there's, you know, lines in the sand, even though there are cracks in these tribes. And there was something interesting to me because like we saw the group of, was it, was the winning group? Oh my God, all these names. No, no, it was, I'm, I'm an idiot. It's the losing group. So Tiffany, Kenzie, Q, Hunter, Tim, and Ben, right? So we had a, we had all three of the Yanus. Um, and then we had Tim and Ben from Sega and Hunter all alone, the only member of Nami that was in this orange group that had, um, you know, had not gone to this uh, this little feast that the purple team got got to go to. And we saw Tim and Q talking a lot. And Tim was really pitching the idea of sending Hunter out, um, even though Q, Tim, and Hunter are all supposed to be in this six person alliance that they had made on the journey. Um, Tim was pushing to Q to get Hunter out really hard. Um, and it was funny because Q was taking this as just like, oh, Sega's just trying to get another Nami out because they lost somebody because Mariah left. So that, you know, Sega lost another person. They just want a Nami out. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I, I get that you guys, like Q, Yanu, like you're used to Sega and Nami like being at war, but like, this is actually a smart move. <laughs> Hunter is like a huge threat, a huge yeah. competitor. Like, mm -hmm. and... It's just, it's not a Nami versus Sega thing. And I thought, as I was thinking about it, I thought to myself, like, Nami still hasn't even had anyone voted out at this point. Mm -hmm. Randon was still the only person that's left from their tribe due to a medical reason. Like, Tim throwing Hunter out there is not like a, like a Sega taking a shot at Nami after Nami took a shot at them. This is just someone trying to take their very first shot at Nami and taking out, arguably, their strongest player. Um I don't see why this would be like why Q was so hesitant to even consider this. I just I didn't understand that. Especially because now that we're in the phase of the game where like individual immunity is a thing, he could he could in theory just win out at this point. Like if you have the chance, you have to take it. Yeah. I'm interested to hit Kyle's thoughts here. He seems well, deep in thought. You do have to remember that Q doesn't know like fully what Hunter is capable of, you know, because a lot of those challenges, they were always playing like against each other and you were engaged in your own thing. So you're not really seeing or probably even remembering how much of a standout Hunter is because they're so consumed with their own losses. Like, you know, yeah. like I'm trying to like just think of what it might be like in that position. And I feel like you may not 
even if you think it's a threat, you may think that you're on a little bit more of even playing field than you actually are. Like, I don't disagree, but I feel like Jeff is always so vocal about his commentary during these challenges, and Hunter is consistently the one that like pushes them to the win. And I feel like right. that's always like a thing that he brings up. That is true. See, that's the thing. Like, Hunter does a lot of the things towards the end of competitions where like, oh, you got to get all three of these shots. You got to hit all three of these coconuts in the nets, you know, at the end. So that means that a lot of people are standing around watching like the last three competitors from each tribe, you know, like, um, cause even, like I, I think it was too, like, I think it was Tevin at one point, like they were, they were in the middle of like one of those, like you have to shoot the things. And they were like, if Hunter gets to that point, it's over for everybody. Like someone from like a yeah. completely different tribe was like, if Hunter gets to this point, we're screwed. It was probably a Sega person because they they kind of they would have Tevin. a better under Kevin Tevin oh Tevin well Tevin oh, and well, Hunter are they're on, on the, the same, same tribe they're now. on the same tribe yeah he would know oh then they're both Nami maybe it wasn't yeah, I don't would, remember <laughs> yeah but yeah. like I don't know like I I could also see Q being like of an ego like kind of a mindset here. They're like, oh, if I had just nailed that one last thing, because they would usually be the last, mm -hmm. the closers, if you will. It's like, oh, if I would have just nailed that, then he would have been talking about me that way. So he probably still sees him as more like of an equal. Mm -hmm. But like, I I don't understand this on the other front too. It's like, so what if you thought this was a Sega versus Nami number for number thing? Why are you so keen on protecting the Sega numbers? As long as it's not Yanu, what do you care? Yeah. Let Fine. Let it be that right. Nami gets another number out. Who cares? It's not you guys. Like, I don't... Right. Why are we so concerned with not participating in whatever that perceived feud is? Right. Right. No, I, I totally lot. agree. And it's like, I just, I feel like... Uh, these guys are alive, as far as I'm concerned. Keep going totally. back and forth. And I'm going to sit right over here. Who are we voting for? <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. Eat each yeah. other alive. Um, because in this situation, like, when they got to Tribal, Yanu had more members in that Tribal Council than any other tribe when they finally got there. And it's like, if you could take off another Nami person, now Sega's lost two, Nami's lost two. Each tribe only has one more person than you do now. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it going. Yeah. Do you, like, you hear what she said about you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were all there. <laughs> we were all there. <laughs> right. Right. I was starting mad shit. And honestly, she said I you eat too much like, rice. I I actually feel like it might have been a really smart idea because then you come out of this phase with Ben and Tim as allies. Um, and now all of a sudden, what's left of Yanu and Siga can team up on Nami, which we know has all these cracks anyway. That would that would have left you know, Nami with Venus, Tevin, and Soda and Liz. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that would have put Yanu and Siga in like such a dominant position in the rest of the game going forward, I feel like. And especially having Ben and Tim at that point, if you want to go with this whole Nami Siga thing being so important, you got one on each. Yeah. It's yeah. so good. It's so good. <laughs> Q should have phoned home. We would have told him. <laughs> like, what you doing? Um, like, come on, we can be a lifeline. <laughs> Phone a friend. <laughs> right. But so that's some of what was going on uh with the with the orange team who did not have the feast. The purple team that that did have their little their little pastry and sandwich uh feast. They were feeling pretty good because they, you know, they had food, all that. They knew that whoever was leaving from their tribe would at least be able to stick around the rest of the season because they'd be the first jury member. So spirits were a little higher there, but Charlie was definitely feeling the heat because while Hunter was the only Nami member on the purple group, um, it's uh, <laughs> Kyle, you could have just said that. <laughs> I know, because my whole point of not saying it was I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt, but now I have interrupted. <laughs> I know. I know. Kenzie, was, Kenzie was on the orange team. <laughs> oh, well, then I'm glad I didn't say it. <laughs> Never mind. Um, Sorry, everybody watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, um, so. <laughs> so yeah we were at the purple team's feast and charlie was feeling the heat because the only nami member there was hunter um and you know the only nami member on the purple i'm all thrown off now. <laughs> the only nami member in the purple group 
my god. All right, hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> also, too Four many five. colors, and they're too similar. Purple and orange. Okay. Yeah, but Hunter. like orange was also Nami, and like Yanu was purple. Oh, uh, I know. Mixed I know. The people up. And, like, they really oh, should have just done like blue and red. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I don't remember anything. Obviously. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. So um <laughs> Hunter was the only Nami member on the orange team. Um, right? Which meant that when we got to the purple feast, we saw the rest of Nami. That means there's four of them there. Um, the four that were there were Liz, Tevin, Soda, and Venus, with two Sega members in Maria and Charlie. With Maria winning the individual immunity, this meant that Charlie could be voted out. And he didn't have any other tribe mates with him that could be voted out. So he was feeling the heat because he's, he's thinking, is Nami going to stay four strong and vote me out because they can't get Maria out? Um, obviously, we found out that a lot of things were going to be going on in that group. Um, Tevin had no intention of sending Charlie out. He wanted to take a big shot, um, a big blind side. And of course, as he's talking about this production, the camera is you know panning to Venus. So we're thinking this must be the end for Venus, right? That's what I was thinking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's no way that this is gonna work out for venus um but yeah so suddenly uh talks start to come up who was it that uh tevin approached first i know he approached i don't remember the order i know that he spoke to maria he spoke to liz about the possibility of getting soda out um i think he, he spoke to charlie also i think um, i think he started with charlie okay i think okay. yeah um, but yeah, all of a sudden there was this big push to get soda out while soda obviously thought it's going to be an easy night for me because we're getting Venus out of here. Um, but the one thing of course about this was that Venus is left out of all these plans. I'm like, of course, so uh, of course Venus would go along with a vote to take out soda. Like, nobody is talking to her, even when she's going to people and throwing ideas out there. Um, I just thought it was weird that no one was including her in anything because they know it would have been easier to get her vote. And then she would have maybe felt some trust with you. You get a little bit of, I, I don't, I still don't get, we say it week after week, yeah. the like hatred of Venus. Um, it's seemingly from everybody. At one point, uh, there was this whole thing of being like, oh, we might as well get rid of soda because we know what kind of game Venus is playing. And I'm like, Venus hasn't even had a chance to make a move yet. <laughs> She's no, only been to one tribal. People don't like her. I think it's, I think that Maria conversation kind of shed some light on that. It seems like she just walks up to people and just says what should be happening. She's not really like, anytime she pitches something, it's not about like, hey, I'm trying to work with you and like, let's have a conversation. She says, this is what I think should happen. Oh, you don't agree? Oh, I thought you wanted to work with me. Mm. Well, maybe I do want to work with you because I could maybe I could find some loyalty in you, but that doesn't mean that our ideas are not a collaborative effort. Um, and that's not ever how she comes off. So like if that Maria conversation was any indication of how she handles all these other you won't work with me chats. Well, then maybe that's why. She also yeah. not not to jump the gun. She was pretty quick to take credit for this idea that wasn't hers. I don't blame her for that though. I honestly don't because she she was not told that soda was the target. As far as she knows, she's the only one that went around and said to somebody, "Let's get soda out." She thought she was going to go home, and then the votes were read, and Soda went home. So what does what does she think? She has no knowledge that anybody else made plans to take Soda out. So like, all right, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. you can't you can't blame her for that. And like, honestly, even some of the other stuff, like I feel like I agree with you, Kyle, that the Maria conversation was the first time that I felt like we were actually shown something that was like, mm -hmm. all right, like she's having a conversation with Maria. Maria is clearly not fully on board. And then I did catch the comment from Venus being like, oh, so you want to work with them instead? Like, I, I definitely caught that. Um, I just I wish if there were more moments like that in the future that we would have seen them already so that like there was like a foundation for this, because part of me feels like, OK, some of that could be frustration of Venus being like, I was in a tribe. We were dominating. No one wanted to talk with me and work with me. Now we're finally at merge. I have some other options of people to work with. The second I, I bring up a conversation, let's break up Tevin and Soda, which Maria is already talking about with other people. Maria's like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to commit to anything. You know, I'm just like, I, I, mm. I, I don't know. It feels like no one has ever worked with Venus. And at some point, she's going to start to get frustrated and it's going to make her look worse than she might be or... Maybe, again, 
if I'm wrong, then we're just not being shown enough to like mm -hmm. enough evidence of the way that she behaves that everyone finds so shady and snaky. And, and, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I Venus's portrayal and like the reaction she's getting from everybody is just bizarre to me. But I still don't think it's like bizarre. Like I, I do understand kind of where it's, well, I think I am, again, just based on the Maria thing. We haven't seen enough, but I think that we were shown that for a reason. Mm. And that's how she's been carrying herself on the NAMI tribe, and that would be why. That's all. Right. No, that's and fair. the only reason that maybe Randon was open to working with her is because she knew she had to take a back seat to whatever he had to say because he had the advantage. Right. Right. But... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how she navigates conversations now going forward. And I think that'll really like kind of determine that. Right. Because yeah. Maria did fly. And I also, you got to give Maria some credit here too, because um, she was very, very clear with her why she did not want to work with her. And I liked that. She said, right. well, how come? She goes, well, I was a little turned off by this, this, and this. And I was uh -huh. like, you know, this is a proper conversation. It's perfectly direct. <laughs> yes. Like, I'll tell exactly. you exactly why. <laughs> exactly. This is what I did not like um, about how you spoke to me. Um, and I also give Venus some credit because she did receive it. Mm -hmm. At right. least me. It looked like she said, right. oh, okay. Well, when I said this, like she was really asking for more information, which I thought was like a very nice, um, this is a good way to handle that. It's an impressive conversation for all. Yeah. But right in front of Charlie, too. Like, Maria gives no figs. <laughs> yes, what, you want to know? All right, I'll exactly. tell you. Exactly. You asked me. You asked me in front of him, so that's on you. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I, it's funny. Like, I almost feel like if Venus had been on a tribe with Maria from the start, I wonder how her game would be. Because I feel like mm. maybe Maria could have helped Venus. Because she's the only one that you know if venus has been kind of rubbing people the wrong way clearly um the nami tribe's solution to that was just to kind of cut her out it felt like at least what mm -hmm. we were shown but like maria took the time to be like listen it's not that i don't want to work with you i just didn't love the way you approached me and like maybe now venus will change her game because of that like maybe, maybe maria now they do her. yeah and maybe now they find a relationship like a very mother daughtery kind of a thing i could see venus now like going up to her like she's like her survivor coach <laughs> Listen, right. I want to have I want to have this conversation with so and so. <laughs> Should I say it like this? Um, what if that's our final two? Truly, if the <laughs> wow. if the entire wow. tribe like iced her out and won't tell her why, how is she supposed to be better? You know, how right. is she supposed to communicate right. effectively right. if you're not telling her what you don't like? You just stop <laughs> talking to her. Right. right. Which is why, again, the whole I don't think that Venus handled it re uh, right, but I almost can understand why she was like, okay, I'm having a conversation with you. You don't want to commit. So yet again, another person that doesn't want to work with me, you're working with them instead. Like that's almost how I like took it for like Venus, like mm. <laughs> because of like what I've seen. Like, it, that's like, all right, fine. Same old, same old. Nothing changes around here. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, okay. it's like, we finally get to a new stage of the game and you're telling me that you, you won't give me an answer. Like this is all I got at Nami. Now it's all I'm mm. getting at Merge. That's like that's kind of, that's okay. kind of how I took okay. it from Venus, but like, sure, I totally see that. I so I so read it as her just being a little flippant, mm. like oh my way of the highway, <laughs> but just not as direct, right? Because I, I just oh you I, don't like my idea? I guess you don't want to work with me. Bye. Right. <laughs> like, well, what? I just felt like too like there was another vote. I think it was the Mariah vote, the last one we had actually, where everyone was on board to vote Mariah out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys read it a different way. This was from episode six. Like Venus, I think they were at the water well. And Venus was kind of like, but why Mariah? Like, why not somebody like Charlie? I feel like Charlie's a much bigger threat. And it didn't felt like to me like she was trying to force anybody. She was just kind of saying like, but why Mariah? Like, what are the reasons for this? Like, I see Charlie this way. Like, does do you guys feel that same way about Mariah? Like, it didn't feel to me like she was pushing anything. So if like, again, this was like, it's another example of getting no support or like feedback from Nami. Mm -hmm. And now the same thing happening here and probably the frustration boiling over. That's how I kind of took mm -hmm. it, but I could be totally wrong. So you're right over there, Kyle. They're an intruder. No, I think this is like a really loud truck backfire. <laughs> you didn't hear that? No, no. Oh, I got nervous for you though. 
No, it sounded like it was just like a really large vehicle, but I was like, wait, but then you have these headphones on, so uh-huh. it sounds muffled. It's like, wait, is that happening in the, did my hot water heater just blow up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I did not hear that? anything. Yeah, that's all. Sorry. <laughs> I, definitely, I, def- I definitely did panic for a second. You there. look concerned. Yeah. yeah. I was very concerned. It's like, am I good? <laughs> um, all right. So trying to think here what haven't we talked about before we go into tribal councils is there anything else that you guys can think about from the episode before we get into the two tribal councils that we know you brought up things i forgot about so (laughs) okay all right um so at the first tribal council um we had the yanu three with hunter and then the sega uh, members ben and tim Mm -hmm. um and yeah it was this was the first time that i feel like yanu must have felt between Q, Kenzie, and Tiffany, this must have been the most powerful that they have felt all game. It took almost two weeks to get there, mm-hmm. but um, they felt like a real tribe in this game for the first time to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, even though we're technically merged now, but um, yeah, you had obviously Hunter making his pitch of being like, "I'm a free agent. Like, come take me on board." You know, you had Tim uh, saying. Uh, trying to point out all the reasons. Like, Hunter is a uh, a comp beast. He's been dominating the game for Nami, uh, carrying them through the game. Um, and so, really, it, it came down to a battle between uh, Tim and Hunter, it felt like. Um, at least at least Tim thought so. <laughs> <laughs> we found out it wasn't, wasn't quite so close. Um, but, yeah, any thoughts about this tribal council? Any thoughts at all before we get to what the vote was? Honestly, this one seemed pretty cut and dry. It right. was pretty cut and dry. There, there was that one comment that Hunter made that was like, "Oh, I want to, I want this to be a show of trust that you can. I want to work with these people in the game." I thought that was a little, little early to be a little bit that direct because you kind of named, you kind of like really implied who you intended to work with because it wasn't going to be Tim and it wasn't Ben. Um, so I just thought that was a little interesting. I'd be curious to see if that has any like um, ripple effect there, but right. That's that's the only note. Okay. So like an odd show of strength for somebody who is technically would be the lowest. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Once you get to a proper merge uh, in that little group, you you don't win. Yeah. So. Right. Right. Um, and uh, Jeff read out the votes. So the first two actually were for Hunter. Of course, those were Ben and Tim's votes. Um, but the next four votes. Try to. I was like, leave him alone. Him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cut it out now. Stop it. Put your hand out. You get a papow. <laughs> <laughs> a papow. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Tim, <laughs> Tim voted out four to two. Tim voted out four to two, which means I think this is secretly why Mikey's not here tonight. <laughs> he, he said ashamed. he had tra- travel issues. Yeah, mm-hmm. he said he had travel issues. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Mikey's team has been eliminated. Uh, 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 all three Sorry, babe. Yeah. I, <laughs> sorry, babe. Sorry, <laughs> babe. Damn. Damn. Sorry, Mikey. He is still uh, a part of the battle of the unwanted. <laughs> so there's that. He's He does have that, at least. My, my only other comment for this tribal is that now um, every single one of my team members has made it to at least jury. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Every That's single one, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I took my first loss at the next tribal. That's right. That's right. Wow. That's right. Okay. At least you finally got um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, I'm trying to think now. So you have three people in the game, right? Mm-hmm. There, was there 12? So you, there were 12. Me, me and Kyle are tied right now. Right. So you and Kyle both have like we both have three have left. Three left and I have two. I have two, mm-hmm. right? Okay. All right. All right. We'll see how this goes. It's gonna Even be an interesting Mike match. Is down here, I am still extending the invitation to come <laughs> on board, Team Petty. Yeah. Um, I am. He, he can come he can come sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> um well, God. Man. So, I know, I know. I mean, I not know. even in jury. I mean, even even hobbling across, John made it to jury in Australia. <laughs> and I, I got to say, too, in a way, mine is like a little bit more impressive because there were 24 people in Australian Survivor. There were only 18 here. <laughs> so, 
Jeez, just just to knock him down. <laughs> no, yeah, fight. kick him while he's down. He's, he's already at the bottom. <laughs> No, no. Actually, you know what? You know, what? No, I, I, I'll rescind. I'll rescind my last statement because it is different. Each of us. Mine is still worse. Mine is still worse now that I'm thinking about it. Because I had eight people on my team for Australian Survivor. Mikey only had four in this. Yeah. So you, bas- you basically lost his team twice. Yeah. So <laughs> I. Yeah. I am still the biggest loser. I am still the biggest loser. Oh, lost okay. his team twice is a crazy way. Yeah. To <laughs> It's all right though. I've had some good wins. All right, I've had some good wins too. Yeah, but yeah. Australian Survivor was rough. Um, all right, second tribal council. Um, obviously, it felt like everyone was coming in trying to play up the idea that Charlie was the easy vote. Um, but there were two plans put in place here. Everyone thinks Charlie's the easy vote, but we've got one side over here thinking that it's venus going out i guess that was really just soda thinking that venus is going out <laughs> and then everyone else thinking that soda is going out or at least hoping if you're a venus because she has no idea what the plan is <laughs> um so you know we, we're going back and forth charlie tosses out the idea teases the idea of playing his shot in the dark he even takes that little pouch out with the die in it um but yeah anything b- about this tribal you want to talk about before we get to the vote just a shot in the dark crap. Like, I feel like they are production. They, I feel like they are really trying to make us think that shot in the dark is awesome. Cause I, isn't there like a lot more conversation around it this season than ever before? We gotta make sure they don't do their shot in the dark. Gotta make sure, gotta make sure. And it's like, since when did we ever care this much? Cause even correct me if I'm wrong. I think we talked about this once before. They haven't seen 44 or 45 rather prior right. to coming on this season, right? right? So they don't right. they know that not, Caleb yeah. worked. Right. So they've like, never I... at this point, none of them have ever seen this be successful. Right. So yeah. like, who cares? Like I, I they're just it's it comes up every single episode. Make sure they don't use it. I gotta have my vote or the, do I have even to, like the way blah, that blah. Charlie pulled it out of his pocket did not feel organic. It felt like, oh no, blah, 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 blah. but like nothing that he's ever said or done <laughs> feels like that's the kind of tribal person that he is. It's like, <laughs> and my advantage. Like it felt like yeah. they told him to say that. You know? Yes, it's like, like... They just, again, they wanted to be in the stop trying to make fetch happen. <laughs> It's like he suddenly became like a Price is Right model and was like, I have my handy shot in the dark (laughs) night. Like it was like, it almost looked like he was trying to do the Ferris, like, oh, it's really hot out here. Oh, Mm -hmm. oh, oh, an idol for me? Like, but that's so not who Charlie is. No. And like you shaking a little bag of dye is not at all threatening to me. (laughs) Like, like, okay, thanks. Just weak. Yeah. That's all. That's my only thing. Um, but hey, we got to the vote. Uh, Jeff came down with the with the container of votes, and Charlie he shocked he shocked shocked the world here. Did not use his shot in the dark. Can you believe it? <laughs> and the votes were red. <laughs> the votes were red. We had one vote for soda. We had two votes for Venus, followed up by three votes for soda, meaning soda leaves by a four to two vote. Um, yeah, and which is then when we got the moment, as Gina mentioned, uh, that we had Soda turn to Venus, say, this was you, wasn't it? And Venus says, yes, going on the very limited knowledge that she has. (laughs) And we see very quietly Tevin just go, no. No." (laughs) (laughs) I I am curious, though, like, uh, like, what does Venus do? Like, because obviously Maria and Charlie know they had conversations more with Tevin about this. So, like, but does Tevin not want Soda? Like, does Soda, is she less likely to give Tevin a jury vote if she finds out that it was him <laughs> that came up with the plan? Even though we saw that Tevin voted mm-hmm. Venus out. He didn't vote Soda out, even though he yeah. was the one that came up with this plan. Like, how does, like, Tevin now pull this into his resume? Uh, I don't know if you can, honestly. It's. it's I mean, it's I guess so- if, you're at a, if you're at a final tribal council, though, and, like, Tevin's saying... Venus thinks that like, let's just say hypothetically way down the road, we get a Tevin Venus final two and they're making their pitches to the jury. Right. And Venus is saying, I pulled the move to get out soda. I guess if you have Charlie and Maria there in the jury, they're going to be like, no, that wasn't you. Yeah. But so. <sighs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I don't disagree. 
I just cannot imagine Venus in the final. I can't just, I just can't imagine that actually being necessary. Yeah, the, the odds are very stacked against her. Could you have imagined Erica? Could you have imagined Gabler? We don't talk don't about know. Gabler. <laughs> How dare you bring that name into this house? I mean, he's a winner. What do you, what do you do? Our next guest on Stretch. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling sick that night. Sorry, can't make it. Just kidding. Just I'm kidding. sorry. Oh, that's wrong. I mean, I still want to talk to him. Jeez. Yeah, I'd still talk to him. Man. Gosh. Sick. No, I'm sick that but... day. <laughs> wow. You know, you're right. I mean, who knows? I, I think in that one scenario, you could claim it. Yeah. And, and you can correct it. Because there are people to corroborate. Mm. I also would, I, I will say this also, if Tevin was in jury and Venus somehow was at final two, <laughs> it would be pretty, and I, I've been supporting Venus this whole season, but it would be pretty funny if Tevin was like, asked a question, was like, Venus, what can you say is your big move in this game? And she was like, I got soda out. And then Tevin was like, eh, that was no, me. you didn't. <laughs> She would have had to do something else far more impressive than this soda vote to even make it to final two. Yeah. Her I mean, answer should, people... should be something better than right. that. We do see people skate by, though. I mean, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. So, and then if you make it far enough and you haven't done anything, then you're the goat that everyone wants to pull to final two. So, mm. right. Yeah. It's, not, it's certainly not impossible. Um, but yeah. So we saw in this episode Tim and Soda leave the game. Um, so where does everybody stand? Kyle did not take a hit this week. Safe. So, yeah, Kyle's left with three. Tevin, Tiffany, and Kenzie, which I got to tell you, like, Kenzie. I'm looking good. I'm looking yeah, this good. is a strong a strong uh, trio that you have here for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Because Absolutely. I've I've really, I've honestly liked Tevin and Tiffany pretty much the whole time. There's been, like, moments, you know, like – Obviously, there's been a lot of the whole Venus thing we've talked about, and then the whole Jess thing where Tiffany and Kenzie made the fake idol. I didn't love that. But generally, I've always loved Tevin and Tiffany. Kenzie, I've been a little bit more like hot and cold with. I feel like I started off really liking her and then not liking her as much. And then the last couple of episodes, I have started to love Kenzie. <laughs> yeah, I like her a lot. Um, I really like yeah. my team. Now that you have, you've got a, yeah, a very solid <laughs> yes. team. Yeah, very solid team. Much. Um, even though you won't watch his dance videos that I send you. No. <laughs> I'm not interested. All right, fine. Um, and then <laughs> she didn't watch it either. <laughs> it's true, I well, didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> see? Bunch of jerks. Whoa. Um you and then you. I also did not take a hit this week. Um, but I'm two players down. But I still have Venus and Q left. Honestly, the only person I'm still rooting for on my team is Venus. All right. <laughs> I mean, look who I've got. Venus I know. and Q. Your team is it's rough looking. Yeah. Good you, luck. You, 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 got, you got some problems. Some problems. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Gina still looking pretty good. Obviously lost soda, but Gina's listen, Maria. Good. Yeah. Maria Hunter and, and Charlie. Again, a very strong trio. Mm -hmm. I love so. my team. <laughs> <laughs> Although I am, I the one thing I'll say just about Charlie is that that move to tell Venus that he was the one vote for her is still perplexing to me. <laughs> Listen, like, my team's not perfect. Okay, but no, I no, absolutely, them. absolutely. <laughs> I I just wonder because I have actually lost and all. Well, he, he, the thing is, the reason that I like you bring it up again is because I've thought this whole time that Charlie was like a very smart player. Like I thought he's a good player, but like particularly a very smart player and his decision to share this with Venus felt very not smart. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's why I'm like, uh, maybe you'll keep an eye on Charlie, <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah, of course, as we showed before, Mikey is out of this race. Wow. Wow. Sorry, man. Let's yeah, yeah. So let's check out some of these uh these points that, that Mikey uh makes for us, these charts. Kenzie, top performance of the episode, Excellent. 19 Excellent. points. Yeah. 
Uh, Maria in a close second with 18 and a half. Those are our two <laughs> immunity uh, challenge winners. So mm. uh, Charlie then in, in, in third place. So yeah, that was our top three for this episode. Great. <laughs> All right, let's take a oh are you wow! kidding? <laughs> Whoa, the timing. The timing. The timing. Oh my I made God. it. We are joined. We are joined by our good friend Mikey Marmon. And uh Mikey, we're literally talking about your, your points right now. Well, ah, uh, no, first of all, my first wonderful of all, point sorry. system. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh now I'm definitely gonna sorry. go tinkle. <laughs> Ah. Sorry, sorry about your team, man. Listen, you know sometimes, sometimes things just don't go your way, and you just have to, you have to, you have to just keep on trucking. You gotta, you gotta pick up the pieces, and you gotta do better next time. You know, so next year yeah. there will be a lot of uh, the- oh, oh, entirely no. off Uh-oh. of vibes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Honestly, I'm probably not that far behind you uh, with Venus and Q remaining as my only two players left. So I, I don't have a good feeling about them. But I mean, Kyle you, and you Gina. You had a close call tonight, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Kyle and Gina's teams are looking super strong, though. We were just talking about it. Kyle still has Tevin, Tiffany, and Kenzie. Gina still has Maria, Hunter, and Charlie. So mm. I think I think the winner is coming from one of those teams. Yeah, I have me. I have my thoughts on who that winner might be at this point. I got to be honest. Tell me, I want to know. I I think Kenzie takes it. Yeah, mm. I think she's in a strong position. <laughs> I, she's also, she's also. If you guys have looked at the uh, looked at, she's our highest. Uh, she's our highest scorer, and she's been. We in just the saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consistently well, throughout the season. So if yeah, my say, so we, is any indication. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, I, so we we saw that Ke- Kenzie had the most points for the episode, but we hadn't pulled up the season total yet. And now, so we're looking mm-hmm. at this. Kenzie mm-hmm. with 92 points uh, ahead of even the uh, <laughs> the comp champ, like the just the absolute overall dominant threat of Hunter with only mm-hmm. 86 and a half points. So Kenzie is definitely killing it. Yeah, no, I agree. And who would have thought a Petty would win a, survi- a Survivor season, huh? <laughs> Kyle somebody Petty, from Petty. Kyle's family. Yeah, someone yeah, from Kyle's family. family. It's amazing. Wait, As who's, I who's change, Davis? Davis is, uh, that's Tevin's last name. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I'd be very pleased if Miss Kenzie won. Okay? <laughs> very pleased. I would too, honestly. I'd I'd be down. I'd be cool with a Kenzie win. She's not on my team, but I like. I just want to win a draft. Well, mine either. So. (laughs) Yeah. Oh Um, jeez. Oh jeez. Mikey, you really like you. You came in at such an interesting time because, like, (laughs) we we finished talking about the episode. Like, we're just talking about our teams now. So. I, I feel like you you're just putting yourself through punishment here. Um, but here's our team totals. (laughs) <laughs> for the episode. nine, <laughs> a tie. Uh, yeah, a tie. Our first draw. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's what that meant. First draw. Yeah. You wrote that in the group chat. I was like, I don't know what you talk about. <laughs> like a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tie draw. <laughs> so, different word. Different meaning. Uh, same meaning. Different word. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on board. Now, yeah, Ty, the team Orgino and team Penny are looking board. good. <laughs> I Hello. love my team. Um, Gina did lose a strong player this time around, though. I did, so but my entire at- my entire team made it to jury. All right, and there's something That's to true. be said about that. That's true. That's true. Mine didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, it did not. I'm so Our sorry. Your entire team did, and your entire team did not. And that was all still got in one episode. Oh, you She's do still, still have Liz. Liz. You got Liz. Yeah. She's Paul not Tim still had a to... lot of confidence in me, though. Damn. I, yeah. Damn. She's not going to win. <laughs> yeah. Even let's just say she got to final two. Like, I just think that people knowing that she's a millionaire, as she mm-hmm. loves to tell everybody else, people are like, well, at this point, she doesn't really need it. So yeah, no, yeah. Here's, uh, okay, I have one question to challenge it. Uh-oh. <laughs> to challenge that thought. All right. 
everyone knows Liz has money because she won't stop talking about it. But every, everyone mm. hates Venus. Liz, v- Venus, final two. Who takes it? <laughs> uh, why do we keep saying Can final two? It's a final game three. Game. <laughs> we keep going final two, final two. It's a three. Yeah, it'll be three. I st- I would say Venus. Oh, see, I'm thinking Australia. More. Right. I would What's I'd that, say like... they give it to Venus. I'd say Venus will at that point have done more in the game than Liz probably would have. So I would argue that they would just, it would go to Venus. Hmm. Okay. The thing is, though, like people shouldn't be voting that way. If at that point you still felt like she played the best game, it doesn't matter how much money she has. Like, that's not what you're, you're not giving yeah. it. It's not charity. You know, you won the game. <laughs> so, like, yeah. no, that's that, fair. You know, that shouldn't be the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but all right. I, I, the only reason I keep bringing up final twos, by the way, is because I just want to see what people would think would happen in a showdown. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, I like I, the whole time we were talking about it before. I was like, Am I crazy? I thought there were three people. No, but that is how <laughs> Australia ends because you get yeah. to three and then you go to fire and then you just have the <laughs> right. two. Um, that's what I was thinking of, but yeah, no, you're totally right. None of these scenarios matter. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so we looked at the episode totals, right? Did we look at the season team totals yet? No, no, right now, this is gonna this is a this is becoming a two horse race. I'm you know, unless I have a couple of good episodes, I might be able to catch up. But right now, this is between Kyle and Gina. So first place is still Kyle with 298 and a half points. <laughs> two horse uh, race. Uh, <laughs> three episode wins for Kyle, one episode draw. Gina Morgino, uh team Morgino has 295 points, only three and a half points behind the leader. Get off my uh, back. Get out of here. Get out of here. Um, <laughs> and then I've had only one episode win. I do have I do have a, 211 points. So I am more than 80 points behind both of you. Um, so there's no way I'm going to win this thing. But I did beat one person. <laughs> By Stuck two. L- forever. Yes. At <laughs> Times two. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Sorry, so. Mikey. Man. On the bright side, our our losers bracket down there is uh is been pretty even throughout. Yeah, you guys actually have more episode wins. Uh, Gina and Gina and I are just ahead, uh, seventy one to sixty five point wise, but um, very close yeah. race there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what Liz just commented? Me and Matt have a draft, and only Matt's players have gone on. <laughs> Sorry, Matt Blevins. Sorry, Matt. Sorry, Matt. Wow. That's that very wild. funny. <laughs> That's really wild. That's I really guess, funny. I, I guess Matt uh, followed Mikey's draft. Oof, you know. Don't do that. Bad idea. <laughs> listen, last season, listen, this is just an anomaly. I, last season, you had, last season was you, had, you literally had four of the final eight players last season. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so, what? Yeah, no, I was, I was, yeah, I did well last season. If only we had a point system then. <laughs> right. I think, I think we only have it, had it for like the last. Mikey did. Mikey. Mikey. Yeah. It's karma. I had, because I had D, I had Drew, I had Katora, and I had Bruce. So mm-hmm. I was like riding high. I made it all the way to merge with that middle lose a single player. And then, yeah. and then we started picking them off, but then D won, so it didn't matter. Right. I couldn't right. tell you a single person I had on my team last year. Not a well, you person. definitely had Jake. <laughs> <laughs> you were very excited about that. <laughs> I had Austin. I know that I had Austin. Now. I had who I have? I had Caleb. I had what's his name? Hannah, who quit episode one. Oh, I had Sabaya. Uh, yeah. Didn't I have Sabaya? Yes. I had Mama Julie. Mama Julie. Who was my last person? Oh no. Well, sorry. Find that out. <laughs> uh, oh well. Um. All right. So, Mikey, I I'm still interested if you want to briefly kind of give some of your thoughts on this episode because now that you've joined us, I don't want you to come in just so that we talk about how your team is gone <laughs> and then you leave. <laughs> so, um, some of the things we talked about. So, very quickly, uh, get your thoughts on some of this stuff. So. Charlie telling Venus that he was the one that voted for her instead of Soda. What did you think of that move? Um, 
I thought, I mean, like, I, I could see why the rest of them were like, no, we shouldn't have told her. We should have let her, like, stew in that, whatever. But from Charlie's perspective, like, him and Venus have no relationship, right? So, like, it's not like he's burning a bridge, really. And at the end of the day, all he did was leave her with honesty, and it didn't really blow up in his face at all. She literally at one point was like, I don't care anymore. So it kind of, I think, was sort of best case scenario for him. It could have gone poorly, but I think because like he had, he was, he put that boat out there, he was honest about it and the target shifted anyway. I think it probably was a good move. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just thought it was an odd move. I didn't love it, but I definitely see mm. your, your point. Your point I don't, there. Like, I don't it, think it, it necessarily was thought through. Like, I don't think right, he was like actively right. like, this is why I'm going to tell her. Like, I think it like kind of was word vomit. That's a sort of happened. But right. I think in the, in hindsight, I think it ended up being the right move for him. Like, I think like had he kept that secret and then she found out later, it might have been more of an issue, you know? Okay. Okay. Do you think that Charlie benefited from the groups, like the, the, the whole group being split again so soon after merge? Um, because it Maybe. kind of like, I, like, I wonder if that kind of, okay. I just wonder if it took like, if there was any attention on that at all. Because Q, oh, we talked about this earlier too. Like Q was pissed about like, why did you own up to this? So like, I wonder if they hadn't. And then Q, we saw was on a different tribe than Charlie during this. During the, or it was in a different group rather, not that tribe. Sure, but. it took that pressure off of him. It put a different pressure on him, but that pressure immediately, like he th- thought for a second, he was like, oh, I'm screwed. But because um, the other two tribes were like ready to knock off some, you know, like because they're he just like he ended up being okay in the end right. anyway. Yeah. So right. I'm not like sure. Just, I'm not yeah. sure how it would have worked out for him had it not been a split. To be honest, yeah. I think I think he has enough. He had enough people protecting him within his. I can't remember any of the tribe within Siga, like within that with Maria, with that whole with Ben, with that whole group that he probably would have been fine regardless. But because of the way the tribe split, and because he ended up being like a number that they needed, it ended up being all right for him in the end anyway. Yeah. Um. Hmm. All right. Anything? Else? Well, let me ask you. Rather than yeah. trying to go through all the notes I have for the whole episode, was there anything in particular <laughs> that stood out to you that you just want to <sighs> talk oh, about? God, this episode? So long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I use your notes to jog my memory. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I think we okay. All do. <laughs> <laughs> I. Um, all right. Know, well, just in, you know, what, just in general, then, what did you think about the idea? Uh, not the idea. The fact that Tevin decided to now go against uh, Soda and split up that alliance he had with her. He had been talking about doing that for a long time. I think he's got a strong enough number in Hunter, and he didn't trust Soda enough. Or like, if that was what he felt like the right move was, that's what he felt. But he didn't end up voting for her, did he? He voted. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you said he voted for Venus. Tevin, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, Tevin didn't end up voting for Tevin. Sarah, Tevin right? voted for Venus, even though he was the one that pushed the plan. Because this was another topic we brought up too. Because when Soda left, she turned to Venus and said, "This was you, wasn't it?" Uh, mm. And Venus said, "Yes." And it was funny because Gina had mentioned earlier, and we all know this as the audience, that Venus didn't really have that much to do or anything to do with Soda leaving. It was really Tevin. Mm-hmm and Liz and Maria and Charlie that came up with this plan and talked about it. Um, but my my whole thing was like, as far as Venus knows, she is the one that came with the plan yeah, to get sold no, out. Because because she, n- yeah. yeah, no one included her in any conversations. She went up to a few people and talked about splitting up Tevin and Soda and mentioned getting Soda out. So yeah, when the votes are read out and Soda goes home, of course Venus thinks it's her move. Yeah. Um, so what do you think I, about that though? Like, Can Tevin I still claim that Tevin, move? I don't know that he can claim the move necessarily. I think there's a, I think there's going to be too much like confusion about what happened there because it was so sort of crazy that to like claim that move would be really difficult. He might try to, if it comes to that, but I'm not sure that I'm not sure who would corroborate him on that, especially you, considering he didn't vote the way that he said he was going to vote. Very true. Do you think that like, so the other people that voted the way that he laid out this plan to go, like people like Maria and Charlie and Liz, would they jump yeah, on I and think, say, 
I think the three of them have, even though like Tevin said he was going to do it, Liz was also from the jump on board with getting Soda out. So I right. think the three of them, like the people that actually wrote her name down, have way more of a claim to this move than Tevin does. Because just like saying, and like not that Tevin didn't have anything to do with it. That's not what I'm saying. I, I think he did have something to do with it. But I think throwing a plan out there and then moving away from it doesn't, I don't think you get to like, I don't think it has the same sort of gravitas as a, like following through with what you did, you know, you're not, cause you're not claiming it in the moment. So now you're going to like retroactively come back and say, Oh, I did that. And they're going to be like, right. well, you, didn't, you didn't make that vote though. You didn't vote that way. Right. I don't Which know. actually, man, that reminds me of a scenario in Australian survivor when we saw Ferris and Kirby going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And there was a tribal council where Kirby was like, I came up with this plan. And then Ferris was like, but you didn't vote with us. And Kirby was like, well, yeah. it was my plan. And who won yeah. that season? Not not Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> so. so. But yeah, I do um, think, I will say, as far as the plan for Tevin's like decision goes, if he was, tr if, like, if he was deciding between Venus and Soda in this moment, Soda would be harder to get out down the line. So if he wanted both of them out, and he was going to take that chance with this episode. That's what he decided. Soda was was the better choice, I think, now. Because Venus is someone that you can rally everyone against. Fairly, mm -hmm. I would argue, fairly easily. Whereas Soda is much more likable. Soda yeah. has probably, at that point, had more relationships going. And like, so I think that would have been a harder... That would have been a harder thing to do down the line. So it was smarter to try to make that vote happen now. Right. So I'd say that was that would have been a good move but I don't think he made the move. Right. Okay. I think it depends on who you're sitting against in a situation like that, because there is a world in which you can say, you know what, this was my plan that I still went with Venus because I wanted, I, I still went with Venus just in case I couldn't trust you, but it didn't mean that I didn't put the wheels in motion. So you may, it's maybe not a full claim mm -hmm. to it, but like, you're not completely but if sitting next to, that's from it. No, that's fair. That's fair. But yeah. if he, it's, it's like you're you're right though. It depends who you're sitting next to. Like if he's sitting next to like say like I don't know Hunter, you know, who had nothing to do with this at all, mm. then it's one thing. But if he's uh -huh. sitting next to Maria, or if he's sitting next to Liz, who like actively participated in it, I would say it's harder to be like that was me. You know, right? right. Yeah. But that's right. so that's that's a that's a great point. Definitely. Um, what do you think about Q? Annoying as hell, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I actually was just you. I was just gonna so, witness. This this has to do with uh, with Q and I feel like we can have a, a broader conversation, but I feel like uh, one of the things I specifically wanted to ask you about was we saw Tim and Q really going at it about who to take out. Tim really was going, you know, I want to get Hunter out. And Q wasn't having it. All three of these guys are the ones who came up with the six-person alliance, the plus-one alliance. Um, what did you think about Q and Tim's back and forth? Should they have taken Hunter out, you think? Or, like, I don't know. You know, it depends. I mean, I think Hunter is a Hunter's a target. Hunter is, a like, a solid threat to win at the end of this game. Hunter can probably fairly easily make it through Merge winning immunities left and right depending on what they are and like how it goes whatever but um so like the idea like his name being out there made a lot of sense to me i do think like if you're gonna because the second they the second that they make that play though that six person alliance falls apart i don't think there's a there's i don't think this six person alliance is now a five person alliance they've lost maria entirely at the very least because now that she's she's got no She's got no in with them anymore. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. so now we're down to four. And I think there's already tension there because now Q, like, I don't know. I just don't think, I think that if they wanted to make that alliance work, they obviously made the, that would have been the wrong pull. And either way, they voted out Tim. So yeah. that alliance is, that idea is down the drain. Yeah. Because now why would, why would anybody now, like, why would Hunter now be like, oh, I can trust Q? Because, right. like, within this alliance, because he, you know, so I don't, I think, yeah, that's where I'm at. And to Kyle's point, too, about Q just being annoying. He's on my team, but I'm <laughs> finding him pretty annoying. Um, it feels like he's always just trying to control whoever he's, he's talking to. If, and mm -hmm. if he, if they have a disagreement, he's not about it. 
I just realized that Kyle, you changed your name to Kyle Petty Davis Petty. <laughs> you did that a while ago. <laughs> I, I watched it happen in real that. time. <laughs> I only just realized that. Um, but yeah, like, what do you think about how Q plays the game? I, it feels I like think he's it's, very. It's, it's weird. too aggressive, and it's he's yeah. already pissing off his own alliance. Right. And I think, right? I think sooner rather than later once they once the numbers even out just a little bit more i think kenzie and tiff are gonna they're gonna cut that cord as soon as they can as soon as they feel like comfortable enough to do it yeah i agree because he's isolating Um, himself he's yeah it's yes if you're pissing off your own alliance members especially after everything they went through on yanu then like Mm -hmm. you don't really have a shot of winning over other people like mm. th- there's no world in which you won over Charlie. Um, oh yeah. And like, you, know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's yeah. like, you know, he, he needs to cool it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Indeed. okay. I only have a couple other things I think, but, um, w- another thing I wanted to get your opinion on Mikey, cause we've talked a lot about Venus on this podcast this season and how it feels like, People seem to really not like her, not trust her. Um, And it felt like for the first time, maybe Venus got some of what she maybe needed to hear from Maria. Mm. Um, I still haven't seen a lot of like the problems that, that uh, you know, the the complaints that people have about Venus. I still haven't really seen a lot of evidence for it. I do think Kyle mentioned this earlier that there was a conversation that Venus and Maria had um, where Maria really wasn't picking up what Venus was putting down. And she was like, listen, I don't want to make a commitment. And Venus was just sort of like, oh, so you don't want to work with me. You want to work with them. And it felt very, it felt a little abrasive. My kind of like pushback to that was that like, it feels like Venus is reacting this way because she was totally cut out of Nami. No one listened to her. No one trusted her from, and from what we were shown, there was no real like evidence for why they shouldn't trust her. And then now she's getting pushed back from Maria. And I felt like in Venus's eyes, it's more of the same. I'm cut yeah. out of Nami. We finally get to merge. Maybe I can play. Nope. No one wants to work with me here either. So, okay. Like I'm going to be, I'm going to be pissed. I can see both sides of it for sure. Um, and I'm just curious what you think. Like, could this be a good thing for Venus? Maybe Maria is going to say like, listen, it's not that I don't want to work, for, for, work with you. It's just that I didn't like how you approached me. Like, yeah. what do you think of I this think, whole thing? I, I mean, like, remember, look at what happened with Emily last season. Like, she heard what she needed to hear, and she was able to make that 180 to the point where she needed to be voted out because she was a threat in a different way. You know what I mean? So I mm. think hearing that is never a bad thing. It's a matter of whether she's going to make the switch she needs to make or not. Um, obviously, Maria and Charlotte, like, they've worked with her now. Whether or not it was intentional is another story, but like they like they chose to side with Venus here. Yeah. So I think it is possible if she can come off, if she can like check herself and come off in a different way. Because at the end of the day, like sure she was treated like that on Nami, but like that's not Maria's problem, you know. So sure. Sure. you have to, you still have to adjust your methods based you based on who you're talking to. You can't just assume that they know what you've been through and like all that, you know? So absolutely, I think, I think she has potential to turn what she's doing around, but she has to, she has to do it. You know, she can't, it needs to, there needs to be follow through with that. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Any other thoughts? Do you, have, do you have anything else that you remember? I feel like the last thing uh, now that I just want to ask you about is what you thought about the tribal councils, if you have any thoughts about those things. These um, are fun tribals, I got to say. Here's my thing. Here's where I'm at. If they – I just don't understand why we're not just doing – like why we're merging. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we could – this yeah. is what we have right now for Your the last two topic. tribals essentially has been just two tribes. Yep. Yeah. So why not – Whittle that three tribes, do a mer, do a swap, do a two tribe for a couple days, and then do a an official merge. That's what I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding like why we're like like edging the merge. I just don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Like it's I it's feel weird. like they it's like they do this because they think like this is their version of Big Brother's double eviction. And that's why they want to, it's like, oh, two people are going home tonight. So it's like they want to add this, but you could do that. You could just have in the early stage of the game when there are three tribes, you could just say Jeff could be like, 
This immunity challenge, there's only one winner. The two losers both go to tribal council. Now you have two people leaving on one night. Right. Or, <laughs> like, or even like done and or done. even have two separate tribes, but like split them down to two tribes, but oh twist, you're both going to tribal council. We're doing a movie. We're, like I think literally, I think they literally did that on Australian Survivor at one point in one season. Like it was a two tribe split and they both went to tribal, but someone had an individual. I'm not sure when it would have been, but I'm pretty sure that happened. At one point, I just don't understand like why we're like doing it in this way, because yeah. you can get the same effect in a way that's much more satisfying. Right. It's 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 weird. I don't, it's know. I don't like the faux merge. I'll never like it. No, I don't like the merge is not either. fun. It's not fun. No. No. I can see on also paper. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. Oh well. All right. Um, I can see on paper that maybe. Maybe they think it's something fun and smart. We had these three tribes, now put them together. They had a little bit of gaming on the seashore, and then we split them up into two random groups. I could see why on paper you think that's exciting, but it, I don't think it translates mm. as it reads. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, is like they're all like celebrating making it to merge, but like there's only five people that got voted out to, up to this point. Like We're only talking about... You you lasted five five tribal councils. That's not that impressive, you know. Like there's still there's still twelve to go. Not yeah. Yeah. not twelve. There's still what ele nine, eleven, ten, somewhere in between nine and twelve to go. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> right. What's the math? Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm, I'm counting. Uh, <laughs> Seven. Then between now and finale. Yeah, it's seven. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really, I really appreciated that. Actually, she was cut off again. <laughs> the nerve! The nerve! I don't oh, know. Mikey, like, uh, it feels like less of a, like a milestone to make it to merge because of the way merge is being treated. That's true. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like I, I, I hate comparing the two games because, like. I don't want to always be talking so bad about our version of this game, but like we just watched uh, we, uh, you know, watched a season of Australian Survivor where like getting to merge was so exciting, and we got to merge here, and I was like, I don't care because I know next episode we're gonna be at, at a two tribal councils of six again. Like, I don't yeah. care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel like a, it. Just like doesn't yeah. feel like a merge. And yeah. then you know what? We'll probably come back together next week, and we'll be one full tribe, but half of them will be safe or something. It's like. <laughs> It's yeah, it's crazy. But like, just play the freaking game. Yeah. All right. Agreed. Does anyone have any other thoughts about episode <laughs> seven? I don't think of Survivor so. Forty Six. Okay. Um, the next on looked fairly interesting. Um, Hunter is hiding in a tree. From what we saw. Why? Why? <laughs> What's going Listen. on there? Because he's a silly, goofy little man. <laughs> I would like to be in that tree. Not it looks a little bit more intense than that. I want to like, <laughs> be up in a tree like that. I, I want to be climbing trees and like chilling up there in the ponds. That looks like so much. That looks so cozy. I don't understand I think, how you shimmy up a tree. That's like, why they should have gotten like, him out. <laughs> like, I, like, how do you just like do that? Like the, the amount of, I mean, I guess I, I've always been big, so I really don't understand this. But like the, the amount of strength it must take to just propel yourself up a stick. <laughs> like it's. Not I can't like, wait like, to see. It. I hope they show the entire process. They must. They have to. You're like yeah. I don't know old school. You know, tree climbing. Like you had branches and things. <laughs> That's not like a coconut. How tree. do you like, climb a palm tree? <laughs> Right, you're just like just shimmying on up. I mean, that's like a reverse firefighter. <laughs> God, it, Matt, watch, watch Hunter builds like a whole like tree system where he can move a from tree to system. tree, he's like, and he's just yeah. like spying on people's conversations, and no one can see him. Watch, be like one of those old school like hamster cages. Wasn't it called like ham or something? It was like it was a, a set of like hams, like a hamster system. I have like, absolutely like no idea what you're talking yes, about. Yes, <laughs> you can buy like you buy like ham compatible like cages, and you can buy like the little tubes and connectors. You can build your own. I like. Thing. I know what you're talking about. I have a lot of yeah. Hamsters, I but I don't remember the brand name at all. Ham. <laughs> sure. I okay. I know what you're talking about too. I also had many hamsters um, growing up as a kid. Um. And they were all named 
Obi Kenobi. It was Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> All of them? Obi- no, well, oh. they were. It was Obi Wan Kenobi, Obi Two Kenobi, Obi Three Kenobi, <laughs> Obi Four Kenobi. <laughs> So. See, I had a hamster I got, and it was a fat boy hamster, and it was my first ever hamster, and it turned out that it wasn't a fat boy hamster so much as it was a, a pregnant female hamster. Oh. So oh. I ended up with a lot of hamsters, because mm. the babies have babies with each other, and then the babies' babies have babies. Yeah. Okay. We have, we have, yeah. We've really taken a turn here. <laughs> <laughs> how many hamsters do they have? Like, how, what is a litter? A lot. Like, like a litter is like, a lot. So many, actually. <laughs> a lot in litter. I'd 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 say probably between like twelve to twenty. <laughs> twelve to twenty. <laughs> yeah. This is a fantastic comment from Xavier. <laughs> on the on the on the night we're talking about episode several, <laughs> Xavier bids an RIP to OB several Kenobi, and I really appreciate that is it. Really fantastic. Oh my god. <sighs> Wow. Tangents are fun. <laughs> um, I have to find this hamster cage brand. We started <laughs> off by talking about Hunter hiding in a tree and then started talking about how many hamsters we all used to own. <laughs> I liked it. I liked Google it. says that anywhere from like 6 to 15 is what That is saying. a lot. That is so many. Wait, so what did they, you do with them? Um, You know kept them for a while they all died eventually they used to get out of the cage and like fo- like walk single file through the house every now and then dog got what a couple of through them. the house like they would just get like marching they would, like, around they just would like, the literally floor. get out of the cage and like march through the house and you'd be like oh there's the hamsters <laughs> there's the hamsters <laughs> There's the hamsters. Oh my god, like Ratatouille style. <laughs> That's really wild to me. Ratatouille. And people just most, scream. I mean, how did you not think this could be mice? Of my life as a child. So one time I was laying in my bed in the morning, and my mom was like doing something in my room, like cleaning or something. And I was laying in the bed, and my dog was on my bed chewing like on a rope toy. And I'm like looking at the oh, toy, I'm like, damn, he really chewed through that thing. That's crazy. And then my mom takes it out of his mouth and goes, not a rope toy. Oh. Not a rope. It was a hamster. (laughs) My God. (laughs) Michael. (laughs) On your bed? On my bed. Oh, my God. (laughs) I hate it. Every story I have ever heard of a hamster dying is something incredibly traumatic. Like they never die in a normal way. It's always something really fucking crazy. Oh <laughs> you want to hear? You want to hear a wild story about a pet? Oh, I, man. I, we had a bish. We had, oh. we had a bish. We had a bish. <laughs> I said we had a big fish tank in my house. Oof. Okay, and near the fish tank was a computer, and oh, I would, no. I would often use this computer. And one day, I was sitting at this computer. And I was doing things on it when I suddenly started to smell a strange odor. And I looked to my left and realized that somehow a fish had jumped from the tank and sadly, tragically, had landed underneath the radiator and was then cooked. Ew, oh my God. <laughs> did How it? did we get here? <laughs> <laughs> what That's is rough. happening? You, you That's can blame Kyle smell, smell, smell. for his for for his ham talk. <laughs> <laughs> I am really sorry. If I had any idea <laughs> that this is where we would be headed, I never would have started. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, and there's, I've enjoyed and there's every still moment of it. people here living oh, yeah, there. I've enjoyed every I've enjoyed every moment of it. I've enjoyed oh every moment gosh. of it. Oh my god. So. Um, That's <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Anyway, Hunter hides in a tree. And then after that, uh Q calls himself a mob boss. But the thing that I'm, oh yeah, we we know also that Kenzie and Tiffany are already plotting. Q's got to go at some point. He's trying to control our games when we're supposed to be working together. So uh, Q could be in trouble. Um, Then uh, the most interesting thing to me, though, from the next on 
was whatever we're going to get in the next tribal council. Because right. when we cut to that moment in the next on, we got a shot of you know Soda, our first jury member, covering her mouth, and Jeff saying that uh, whatever happens here is unlike anything he's ever seen. So that could mean so many things. It really yeah, could. I know. I know. It could mean just, absolutely nothing. I'm gonna hope that uh, I'm gonna have hope that it's something good. Uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> That's my hope. So. Actually, no, that's not what I'm most looking forward to. I want to know why the hell Hunter's in that tree. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how he got up there. Yeah, I want to see the whole thing. Don't just cut he, to him up there. He seems, like such a, he seems like such a physically fit like freak of nature that he probably was able <laughs> to jump from the bottom of the tree to the top with just one single jump. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. <laughs> So, all right. Um, what else for this episode? Oh, there was one other thing. Kind of game unrelated. This is the last thing, though, I swear. Because um, <laughs> I feel like we talk a lot about the strategy, the game side. I really, personally, I like these moments that we got in the beginning. I mean, obviously, I didn't love Ben having a panic attack in the beginning of the episode. Oh. That, that mm -hmm. sucks. But I did really like the moment we got between Benzie, you know, Ben and Kenzie. Um I felt like these are the types of moments that like kind of draw me in. Like I'm really here for the gameplay and the strategy, but like when you get little moments like this, especially when you feel like you've sort of experienced this sort of thing yourself before, and then you see it playing out and just like, you know, I struggle with anxiety and like depression and things like that. And like, I couldn't even imagine if I had some sort of like episode or something like that in a situation like this. And I pray to God that if I ever find myself on a show like Survivor, and I start freaking out that there is a Kenzie Petty there to help me through it. Um, so it was just that was just a night. That was the only other thing I wanted to bring up. Not really. Yeah, it, it could it could become game related. Who knows? This Ben and Kenzie relationship could become a working game relationship for all we know. No, well, it already sort of has. She's already kind tr of true. True. That's fair because of this moment. Yeah. That's true. That's definitely true. Mm -hmm. um, but even aside, I just mean, even aside from any game related things, it was just a nice human moment. Mm -hmm. I thought that we got to see that I really appreciated, especially because I feel like there's been times where we've been kind of down, down, not on just the season, but on the cast itself. And I felt like, all right, there are still some very, um, very good, solid people in this cast to root for. So I'd say Kenzie and Ben are two of my favorites this season for sure. Mm. I agree. I agree. But... I like Ben. <laughs> I just um, think it's but... funny that he's in the that battle. That's all. We didn't know Kyle. <laughs> I <laughs> it's those freaking overalls, man. <laughs> he's got bad vibes. Sometimes the, the next... good vibes take a bad picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next time we have a draft, Mikey's just gonna pick like all the people that he finds the weirdest looking or something. <laughs> I may not even look at the pictures next time. Maybe I'll do a blind draft. Just read uh, the descriptions. Go off that. Yeah. Hmm. I've done that, that before, actually. That actually sounds like a great idea. Now the more I'm thinking about it. It's like yeah. love is blind, except for survivor <laughs> drafting. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know. I have to sleep on that. <laughs> I mean, if I was outvoted, I would do it. But um, I simply don't think I could do worse this se than this season. I so, mean, the, the problem with Mikey's idea is that for the other three of us, we have all at least once drafted someone based purely on the fact that we would like to give them a kiss. So that's not going to work for us. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not saying you guys have to do it. I'm just saying I, that's how I might <laughs> make my. That's no, a fun theme. It's a fun theme. I, I honestly, I just have always generally chosen at least one person i'd like to kiss in every every draft we've ever done <laughs> I, I i will go on record right now and say that hunter was only drafted on my team because i would like to give him a kiss <laughs> yeah i will say usually my first pick is usually looks first bio second <laughs> i don't there was no one on my team that i wanted to kiss this year if i'm being honest i I thought about drafting Kenzie, but Kyle 
laid claim to that with his last name, yeah. so I kind of backed off. No one off was allowed there. to have Kenzie. Thank you for respecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I almost, I wouldn't have had, okay, here's the thing, too. Well, as soon as I saw Petty, I was like, all right, this person really should be Kyle's. But, like, if the person's name, if her name was, like, Samantha Petty or something, like, I might have been more willing to, like, just snatch her from you. But her name's, KP, Ken- yeah, absolutely. her name's Kenzie Petty. She has the same last name and the same initials. I can't. Uh, come on, this is meant to be. Well, technically, it's probably short for Mackenzie, so it's probably MP, really. So no, we know her as Ken- <laughs> we know her as Kenzie. That's all I know her. That's all I will recognize her as. <laughs> no, I still take the petty though. I think we, we were sold on that. You know, the mm. K was just the extra. That was just the extra. It's true. It's true. Um. All right. Well, anything else? Any other thoughts uh, for the, for this episode or Survivor 46 in general? I'm all out of thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, thanks for jumping in late, Mikey. Uh, for obviously, the hell of the day. We, we definitely went a little longer than we anticipated, but I'm happy all that right. you jumped in. No, <laughs> no, 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 not at all, because it was a lot of fun. I, I'm glad. I was disappointed oh, was that you wouldn't it. be here. Yeah, I was disappointed you wouldn't be here. So the fact that we got to see you and – you know, talk to talk about the episode with you for a little bit was nice. So, uh, how's the road been, by the way? Oh, you know, yeah, Things maybe on a different day. <laughs> yeah, That's, don't ask me that question right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, today was a rough day. I know, I know. Okay, yeah. um, all right. Well, so hopefully next week we'll see you, and it'll be better. <laughs> what do we have I'm coming up be here, here next scratch? week? Are you going to be here next week? It's your birthday, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is my birthday. <laughs> He also shares a birthday with like Tommy, like my junior yeah. high best friend. So like, I can never forget Mikey's. It's birthday. just funny that you remembered it and he didn't. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, next Monday is your birthday. I'm not paying yeah. attention to that. I don't have a birthday anymore. I'm done aging. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess. Congratulations. Wouldn't it be awesome? If, yeah, wouldn't it be awesome if you could, so if you could just choose that? <laughs> like, I, this is where I like it right here. We can stop. <laughs> I would stop the twenty-four. That's where I would like to be still. <laughs> um, but all right. Well, happy birthday, Mikey. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> so all right. Well, so what do we have coming up though? Next, uh, well, this Thursday, mm-hmm. first at what eight p.m. Right? We're doing yeah. eight p.m. We've got uh, that'll be the challenge. Uh, right all stars four mm-hmm. uh, so 8 p.m eastern time and then 9 30 p.m eastern time we'll be doing the latest week that which is currently ongoing in the big brother canada house for season 12 of big brother canada um, that's what we have going on the rest of this week uh, and then of course next monday mikey's birthday april 22nd uh we'll be back to talk more survivor 46 um Probably without Mikey because it's his birthday, unless he wants to, you know, let us all sing to him. If he wants to come in, and TBD. Join we'll see. So. We'll see what the plans are. It's another travel day, <laughs> so God only knows. All right, all right. Well, <laughs> Mikey, mute your microphone if you're crinkling. What is happening over there? It's a lot happening over there. It's a lot going on. Sorry. Did your yeah. did your did your dinner just get <sighs> delivered? Yeah, it did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy it once we sign off so here. Um, all right. So that's what we have going on. You can find us on the socials at Strat Chat Pod. Find us. We're everywhere. We're all, we're all over the place. Go look for us. Talk to us. We're nice. Okay. All right. And then also go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts and leave us a really nice review. It's very helpful and we would really appreciate it. So don't be a jerk. All right. And that's it. We are Strat Chat. <laughs> we're out of here. Um, and we'll see you soon. Right. Anything else? That's it. We're done. Goodbye. No, we're leaving.